Washington's already killed it with their coaching staff selection. They went out there and they, of course, brought in a general manager by the name of Adam Peters. For those of you that don't know who he is, he was the San Francisco 49ers assistant general manager from 2021 to 2023. And he spent four seasons with the Niners as the vice president of player personnel. Looking at Peters, he helped out the Niners draft guys like George Kittle, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Nick Boza. And then in free agency, going out there and getting Kyle Juszczyk, Robbie Gold, Richard Sherman. What about trading for Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams? There are people inside of the NFL world that consider Peters the best talent evaluator in football. So that is massive for Washington to get their number one guy. I understand that they wanted Ben Johnson to be their coach and he decided to not take the job, but Dan Quinn is a very good leader. He also has that type of personality that people are just gonna rally around. And nobody is hungrier in the NFL world right now than Dan Quinn. We know why. The Super Bowl, obviously, you know, Kyle Shannon was the OC of that team. So those guys, I'm sure, think about that every single night. And that's why to get a player like that, or I guess, sorry, a coach like that to run this organization to be the leader is massive for this team. And let's not sit up here and lie. Washington has a bad roster. They were flat out terrible last season. They won four games. They were 25th in scoring. They were 32nd in points allowed. 29th overall, 24th in offense, 30th in defense, 32nd in special teams. This team has a lot of work cut out for them. But at the same time, the good thing for Washington is that they have several draft picks to work with. They've got three day two picks. They've got one day one pick at number two. They have the seventh most salary right now. Because remember, they traded away Chase Young and Montez Sweat, who were set to be free agents. And I don't think Washington's going to be too active in bringing their own players back. Like Curtis Samuel, I just don't see a world where this guy ends up coming back. Sure, the past two seasons, he's been very good from the line of scrimmage. We know that he's got that speed, but he's 28. And I don't see why Washington would bring him back when they can just draft the receiver. They already have Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. But I think the biggest thing for the commanders is going to be Cliff Kingsbury, who Quinn hired to be this team's offensive coordinator. I think the thing with Kingsbury is that he took this Washington job because he knows who he's going to get at quarterback. And that's not to say that it's just going to be Caleb Williams. But Magic Johnson and this ownership did tell Kingsbury they would do whatever it takes to get him their quarterback. And to me, absolutely, Caleb Williams is the best quarterback prospect in this draft. I mean, he threw for over 4,500 yards and 42 touchdowns when he won the Heisman during his sophomore season. And then this past season, in his junior year, he threw over 3,600 yards, had 30 touchdowns, and finished the season with a 170.1 pass efficiency rating. The arm talent is out of this world. There isn't a throw that Caleb can't make on the field. He's only 22 years old. I mean, man, everything is just awesome about this guy. But the thing is, is that Washington has the second pick, and you can't go into the process thinking about number one because you don't own that pick. Drake May, Jane Daniels, whoever Washington picks, they're going to be in for a special treat. All I know is that they just have to move on from Sam Howell, and it pains me to say it because I thought Howell had a lot of potential. He did just start in one game last year, and I do think Eric Bieniemy could have done a better job with developing him. I mean, Washington led the league in passing attempts, which again, doesn't make sense. Like I get if you have Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen or a Justin Herbert, but Sam Howell, the guy that started one game, I mean, with a poor offensive line, yeah, that just didn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, Bieniemy. He had the Commanders as the 25th ranked scoring offense. They were 24th in yards. Both of those were worse than last season. And yeah, 636 pass attempts is absurd. Sam Howell graded as the 33rd best quarterback, according to PFF, of 38. It was just a down year. And Howell, unfortunately, threw 21 interceptions. We just can't ignore that, especially in today's game. You need a quarterback to even have a chance. You're in a division with Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, and we'll see who the Giants end up drafting if they bring in a quarterback or maybe they continue to run it with Daniel Jones. I don't really know, but all I know is Jacoby Brissett played in three games and went 18 of 23, 224 yards and three touchdowns. So the potential of Caleb would be through the roof, but at the same time, Drake May might end up being the best quarterback. Jaden Daniels might end up being the best quarterback if you hit his ceiling. If you're going off of upside, you draft Jaden Daniels. But if you're going off of floor, a guy you know is going to be good, then you take Drake May. And again, last year, we looked at Anthony Richardson. We looked at CJ Stroud, or at least I did specifically. And I said that AR, I want that upside. 
I had Hayar over Stroud. And although I'm a Colts fan, and yeah, sure, I'm biased, but also, I mean, out of Florida, he was electric. But Stroud was seen as the safest guy. And a lot of people overlooked that. And he's by far the best player, not, not only player and a quarterback, but player. And he's just out of this world. I mean, the guy's just different. So yeah, Drake May, I'm not saying he's going to be CJ Stroud, but I know he's going to be good. And the commanders, they probably feel the same way. I think they would end up taking him over Daniels. I think Daniels will end up being a, a Patriot. But we'll see what happens with that. Washington, they're going to have a ton of picks. So if they do want to move up to one, they can do it with those but three picks on day two they've got four picks on day three this team has a lot a lot of draft picks and they're in a great position so holes are going to be offensive line defensive end pass rush secondary offensive uh, playmaking linebacker and quarterback so i mean it's pretty simple second pick use that in quarterback and then day two you need to go out there and get alignment a tackle specifically a pass rusher and then day three, you're looking at going out there and getting a linebacker and you know, defensive um, end or someone up front that can actually, well, you know, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne are on this roster. So you just need someone next to them that is going to be able to make plays. And then that's the essence, of course, of bringing back James Smith Williams on a one year deal just so that he can play until the new guy's ready. Maybe he's ready right away. I don't really know. But depth goes a long way in the NFL. You need depth. So Kendall Fuller is also a free agent. I didn't mean to mention him this late into the video. I mean, the guy was the best defensive player, at least in my opinion, on this team last year. He's projected a three year, 40 million contract. He's 29. He is a top 15 free agent, according to PFF. I mean, if the commanders were to bring back a free agent, it should probably be Kendall Fuller because of what he just did. But just because of the age, I'm not sure if they will. But yeah, this defense just was flat out bad, man. Secondary, they gave up the fifth most yards after the catch, 950 to be exact. They were 21st in pass rush win rate. They were 19th in run stop win rate. So this is a defense that just didn't impress. Emmanuel Forbes, they drafted in the first round. He started six games and had his moments but also didn't have his moments you know benjamin st Jude's like they, they just need need to upgrade this defense but with their picks and with their salary they're going to be able to do that they also have a great guy running their general manager role of course i think washington's in a fantastic spot you really can't complain you got joe witt jr as quinn's defensive coordinator this is witt's first coordinator job but he did work with Dallas, Cleveland, Green Bay, and Atlanta. So I think he's going to be perfect as Quinn's right-handed man. He's already done it. So these guys have chemistry. And if you're a Commanders fan, you've got to be feeling good. I'm not saying that Washington is going to do what the Texans did next season. But for all we know, they could. If they hit on this quarterback and they continue to build around him and Quinn changes the culture, which I think he will, then the sky's the limit. Looking at Dan Quinn, he was absolutely incredible as Dallas's defensive coordinator. They were top five in 2023 in points allowed at 18.5 and yards allowed 299.7. He did a good job helping turn around a struggling unit. I like Quinn. The more I talk about it, the more I look into it. I do like the hiring of Dan Quinn. Now, obviously, Ben Johnson would have been my number one choice, but hey, sometimes coaches end up not taking the job and it works out. We've seen that time and time again. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Quinn is going to do with his organization.